All right, I'm going to go over some questions or some of these examples from class and just try to quickly go over the ones that might be a little confusing. Um, I don't feel like this first problem is is uh, too confusing, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. It's just adding and subtracting. All right, this next one. So we multiplied and divided here. And so um, remember that when you're multiplying, you know, this expression is the same as that. And, you know, it's just a simple distributive property. We went over that in class. I feel like that was okay um, here. In this division problem um, really you know you're just placing f of x over g of x and that's just a simple fact um, when you're done you should recognize that um, all three parts these these three pieces all have x's so I basically I'm canceling an x out from everywhere or you can also treat it as factoring as I've done up here okay but your domain back in this original problem right here it would not be good to use 0 for x at the bottom so you do have to mention that your domain is everything except x can't be 0. Okay, so it seemed okay. So let's go on to the next. Um, now here, in class we worked on this one. Um, you know, if you're adding two expressions together, it's like we did earlier. It's, um, you put a big old plus sign between them, and sometimes that's all you can do. So this might be just your answer. Now it turns out in this case we can do a little bit more with this. Um, and subtracting, same thing. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, work through this on the next page. So 1 over radical x plus 4 radical x. So if I have 1 over radical x plus 4 radical x, the idea is, is that you want to get a common denominator. I mean, I can get a common denominator if I have to add fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, well, this is over 1. I need it to have a matching denominator. So I'm going to multiply that 1 by radical x. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to also do the top. All right, so this stays the same. And then plus. Now on the denominator here, I have radical x finally like I want. And then these two right here, when I multiply those together, remember radical x times radical x is radical x squared. These cancel out, so I just get x to pop out. So this is just going to be 4x. So by the time I'm finished, I have 1 plus 4x in my numerator, and my denominator is radical x. Now, all along I've had this radical x in the denominator, even back from the beginning. So I need to think about my domain. I definitely can't have x be 0 because that would make the denominator 0. And also I can't put any negatives in the uh, radical. So I want all real numbers, but I only want real numbers that are where x's are greater than 0. I can't use negatives and I can't use 0 itself. And then for the subtraction problem, it's really just the same thing. The plus turns to a minus, and so you get the same answer that you had before, the same domain. All right, so this one right here, multiplication and division. All right, so I'm going to do this on the next page. I have 1 over 4 radical x times 4 radical x. Okay, my domain, I could think of it right now, same thing. There's a radical x in the denominator. So I do not want that radical x to have a negative inside or a 0. So my domain is the same thing. All real numbers, x is greater than 0. When I do this, let me check and make sure I wrote it correctly. Yeah, oh, I put an x for 4 there. Sorry about that. Let me erase this little 4. I'll just put a radical x back. All right, so when I do this, after I decide my domain, I notice that these cancel. So I just have 4. That's my answer. On the next problem, I needed to divide these, so I get 1 over radical x divided by 4 radical x. So remember, when you divide, I could write the division like this, 1 over radical x divided by 4 radical x. And remember division, like back in elementary school, if you have something like, you know, 2 thirds divided by 1 half, remember you used to do this, 2 thirds times 2 over 1, you would multiply by the reciprocal. So that's what we're going to do here. I have 1 over radical x times, and the reciprocal of 4 radical x would be 1 over 4 radical x. Okay, so when I do that, the tops multiply to 1, the bottoms, 4 radical x times radical x will just be 4x, and I'm done. Okay, so this is my division, this is my multiplication up above, and my domain here, same as before. I noticed that in the, this original problem, I had a radical x in the denominator here and here, so my decision is the same. All real numbers where x um, has to be greater than 0. And uh, there's the answer as well, same thing. All right, 
So let's take a look at this problem. So I want to divide these things. All right, so I've written the, the answer there, but let's explain it. So I have basically 6x to the fourth is my g of x divided by 3 over x, which is my f of x. So I'm about to do this problem on the next page. So I have 6x to the fourth divided by 3 over x. Let me just make sure that that's correct. Yep, okay. So remember, this is division. So division is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to keep my 6x to the fourth. That's the first part. And it changes to multiplication, and remember that second fraction flips up next to this. So I have x over 3. Okay, so when I'm done, I get 6x to the fifth and 3 on the bottom. So that divides into these two cancel out to a 2, so I get 2x to the fifth. And there's my final answer. Now, this final answer, if I had to look at this, I would say that the domain is all real numbers because I could put anything I want right here. But remember, for the domain, you have to look back to your original. And your original has an x in the denominator. So what that means to you is that x cannot be 0. So onto your all real numbers, you have to say x cannot be 0 because your domain has to work for all parts of the problem. All right, and so that's how you see the answer there. All right, so let's take a look. Um, given these two functions, we did this in class, and everybody seemed to be pretty good. Um, but I did make a mistake on here, right? This is supposed to be 32, not 33, All right? And let's take a look at this next one. So in this next problem, um, just to explain a little bit, you know, w of h of 3, it's best to find h of 3 first. Like, literally, just find the answer. So you're going to plug 3 into this problem. So I've done that here. And I got uh, 18 minus 15, so I got 3. So I'm going to take that answer, that 3, and now I'm going to plug it into my w. So I've done that down below. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 7 25. So 25 is my final answer. When you give me a number to plug in, I get a number for an answer. All right, this next problem. Remember this notation, f of g of negative 1. This notation is the same as this notation. So that weird little circle in the middle is just the composition notation. And I think it would be much easier in the long run to write it like this so you understand what to do. All right, so this means we're going to find g of negative 1. So when we do that, that means I plug negative 1 into this problem. So here I am doing that. I get 1 plus 4 plus 2, so I get 7. So now the answer to this part is 7, so I don't have to need that anymore. I just need 7. So I want f of 7 now, because I know the center is 7. So here we are doing that. 3 minus 2 times 7, because that's what I'm plugging in for this x right here. So 3 minus 14 is negative 11. All right. So here, this is one's a little bit more complicated, but um, we want to find f of g of x. So in this problem, I'm going to do it here since I um, have it on the screen there. So um, if I want f of g of x, that means f is the boss. So I'm going to write this problem down, but I'm going to leave open spaces where the x's are. All right, and then I'm going to put in the other problem, the g of x. So I put radical 5x in here. So I hope you noticed from before, these cancel out. So that's how I get 5x to come out, and then minus 3 for the rest. OK, so in this problem here, um, I want g of f of x. So that means that g is the boss right here. So g is something squared plus 6. So I have written down something squared plus 6. And in that empty space, I'm supposed to put f of x. So that's why I wrote 2x plus 5 right here. All right, so 2x plus 5 squared. Remember, you have to write it twice, and then we're going to FOIL. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. 5 times 2x is 10x again. And then 5 times 5, 25. And then I have this 6 to carry over. All right, so then I'm just combining like terms. 4x squared, I get 20x, and then these two turn into 31. All right, so now we're going to get to the part where um, in the notes here, uh, we did this. So we got to here in class, so you can skip through this if you don't need it. But the answers that we got in class, um, the inverse of a relation, you must simplify. To find the inverse of a relation, you must simply, sorry, not simplify, you must simply switch the x and the y values. All right, so in class, we got some answers here. Let's see, we had negative 5, then we had negative 1 was here. This was negative 3. 
this was one, three, and five. So when we graph that, we had um, this graph. We graph those points. Right, and then we drew a line. And then we came along and did the inverse. Remember, the inverse is the reverse. So I have negative five, negative two, negative three, negative one. Z uh, let's see, negative one, zero. Uh, one, one doesn't change. And then three, two, and then five, three. So if I graph that, all right, uh, let's see, three, two. And I can start to see a pattern there, up one over two and so forth. So there's that line. So this red and this blue line, they are inverses of each other. Okay? They're inverses of each other. And inverses are always symmetrical over the line y equals x. This line right down the middle right there, right down that diagonal, right down the center. This is the line y equals x. And hopefully you can notice that oh, hey, this and this, they're the same over that line. So basically, if you were to fold your graph over this line, you would have the same thing on both sides. And you should remember this from Algebra 2. So that's the line y equals x. And that's how they're symmetrical. All right, so moving on. If the inverse of a relation, I'm sorry, if the inverse relation of a function is also a function, then it's called an inverse function. All right, and then we can denote it like this. So original and there. So you remember back in Algebra 1 where you had f of x, and if somebody asked you to find the inverse, you wrote f negative 1 of x. That, that literally means inverse in math. Okay? So technically, you can find the inverse of anything, but we are mostly interested in things that when you do the inverse, they're still functions. So let me show you a couple of little examples. So this last problem that we did, the red line is still a function. So it was an inverse function. But for instance, if we were to do the, um, the inverse of this graph, if I was to do the inverse of this graph, it would end up looking like this if I did the whole thing. So what we do is if we can take a horizontal line and draw it on our original picture and it crosses twice, what that's going to tell us, it's going to tell us that the inverse will not be a function because a horizontal line is really a vertical line on the inverse, and you see how that breaks the function rule. So you can always tell if the original problem will have an inverse function, because if the original problem fails the horizontal line test, then the inverse won't be a function. So let me just do one more of that. So if I were to draw this picture, if I say, um, let me draw, let me think of one, sorry, let me draw this guy. All right. This also fails the horizontal line test because if I drew the inverse, then it would look like that and it would fail the vertical line test. Okay. So, um, one more. Let's do this one. So let's say I did, um, this guy. That one right there passes the horizontal line test because the inverse looks like this. The inverse looks like that and it passes the vertical line test right so all the horizontal line test does for you it tells you if the inverse of a function will still be a function that's it that's all you're trying to tell all right so that's defined right here and a couple of your math space questions are on that all right so finding inverses using a graph so if you're using a graph all you're going to do is switch the x and the y values in your points. And that's fairly simple. But using equations, what we have to do is we have to actually switch the x and y, and we have to solve for y again. Sorry, that's so messy. So we have to switch the x and the y, and we have to solve for y again. All right, so we're going to do that here on a few problems. So, my domain originally of a line is all real numbers. My range is all real numbers. This is for the original problem. So, let me find my inverse. I'm going to switch the letters. x equals 2y minus 1. Then I have to resolve for y. So, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 
So I have x plus 1 equals 2y. I'm going to divide everything by 2. Divide by 2. So I get y equals x plus 1 over 2. You could also separate that into x over 2 plus 1 over 2. All right, so this is still a line. So this is the domain is still all real numbers, and the range is still all real numbers. But frankly, I also know that because the domain of the original is going to be the range of the inverse. The range of the inver of the original is going to be the domain of the inverse. They switch places. All right, so let's move on to letter B. So in letter B, think about the graph of this thing. Let's do the domain and range. So the graph of this x radical x plus 3, it starts at negative 3 because it's moved to the left 3, and it rises up like that. So the domain of this thing is everything to the right of 3. So it's x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And I'm going to write that a little bit differently, actually. Let's write it with interval notation. So it's from negative 3 to infinity. The range is everything 0 and up, because you see the lowest it goes is 0, and then it just goes up from there. So 0 to infinity, bracket on 0. So this point right here um, is negative 3, 0. All right, so let's do our switch. Remember, f of x is y, so I'm going to reverse everything. I'm going to make this x equals radical y plus 3. So now remember, to um, get rid of the radical, we have to square both sides. So um, that would pop out the y plus 3, and I'd have x squared. I'm going to take away 3 and be done. So I get x squared minus 3 equals y. So my inverse is basically f negative 1 of x equals x squared minus 3. So that way, you know, my original problem said f of x, so I'm going to write f negative 1 of x. All right, but my domain and range have to be the reverse of everything else to keep it a function. All right, so I have to do my domain is 0 to infinity, and my range is negative 3 to infinity. Remember, it's just the reverse of the original 2 down here. All right, this next one, um, my domain is everything but 3, so basically negative infinity up to 3, or everything from after 3, because of that denominator. I can't use 3 as an answer. Um, also, my range, if you remember your horizontal asymptote, Uh, what just happened? All right, my horizontal asymptote is um, y equals 0 because the top has a no x's and the bottom has an x to the first power. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So my range is everything except 0. And you can see that by looking at the graph as well. All right, so here we go. So this is really y, remember. So I'm going to make that x equals 5 over y minus 3. So let's cross multiply. So I have x times y minus 3 equals 5. Let's multiply this left side. xy minus 3x equals 5. So now I'm going to have to add 3x to both sides to solve for y. So I get xy equals 5 plus 3x. And I'm just going to divide both sides by x. So I get y equals 5 plus 3x over x. All right, so my domain is... um everything except for zero. So basically, remember, this is going to be my new domain because look, I can't use zero on the bottom. So it magically switches. So negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity. And my range, well, look at that. Here's my horizontal asymptote, y equals three. So it's going to be everything but three. So isn't that what the old domain was? So negative infinity to three or three to infinity. All right, and I did have one more problem I had planned on doing over on the right side, so I'll just do that real quick. But um, that's it. All right, so let's see. Oops, not there. Let me add a page here. All right, so that last little problem there, D, I had um, f of x equals x to the third. Uh, I think it was 4x to the third, actually. All right, so my domain is all real numbers, because I can use any x I want. My range is also all real numbers, if you look at the graph. All right, so this member is y, so I'm going to make this x equals 4y to the third. So I'm divide the 4 out, so I get x over 4 equals y to the third. And remember, to get rid of a cube, I do a cube root. 
So my answer will be y equals cube root of x over 4. And that's it. My domain is all real numbers. My range is all real numbers. And there I go. So that would be my inverse. And if I want to write it officially, I would probably say f negative 1 of x equals cube root of x over 4. Okay? Remember, you can use Desmos to graph these things to help yourself out um, and see the relationship. Bye-bye.